بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم the integrand in our first integral is a function of x over y plus y over x let's see how to reduce those double integrals into single integrals consider g that depends on x over y plus y over x let t be x over y t is a function of y x is held constant dt is minus x dy over y squared when y tends to zero from above t tends to infinity when y is equal to one t is equal to x the function becomes g of t plus one over t we use this minus sign to have the integral from x to infinity now let's interchange the order of integration in this integral we have x from zero to one this is the line t equal to x given x t is from x to infinity the region of integration is what we have above this line if we swap the order of integration if t is greater than one then x is from zero to one if t is from zero to one then x is from zero to t when we integrate here with respect to x we get one half x squared using the limits of integration this is one half the remaining integral is written using z here we also have one half x squared when we use the limits of integration we get one half t squared that eliminates this t squared in this integral let's do the substitution z equal to one over t when z is one t is one when z tends to infinity t tends to zero from above dz over z squared is minus dt the argument of function g becomes t plus one over t we have these two integrals which are exactly the same the double integral of function g that depends on x over y plus y over x is a single integral t from 0 to 1, g of t plus 1 over t. Let's go through the other tools that we need. Integral x from 0 to 1, x to the a, log x to the b. We use the change of variables, x equal to e to the minus w over a plus 1. dx is minus 1 over a plus 1, e to the minus w over a plus 1 dw. When x tends to 0, w tends to infinity. When x is 1, w is 0. The minus sign here is used to have the integral from 0 to infinity. And this is dx without the minus sign. x to the a, is this exponential raised to the power a log x to the b is minus w over a plus one to the power b minus one to the b can be taken outside we also have a plus one to the power b plus one combining the two exponentials we get a to the minus w our integral here is gamma of b plus one integral x from zero to one x over one plus x squared log one plus x squared the antiderivative is one over four the square of log one plus x squared using the limits of integration we get one fourth of the square of log two integral x from zero to one x over one plus x squared log x x is between zero and one we can use the expansion one over one plus x squared equal to summation g from zero to infinity minus one to the g x squared to the g we can integrate term by term now we apply our result here b is equal to one and a is equal to two g plus one minus one to the one that's minus one gamma of two is one the integral is equal to minus one over 2g plus 2 squared we can take 4 from here that's the remaining sum this is zeta of 2 we need to subtract double the sum of the reciprocals of the squares of the positive even integers which is zeta over 2 divided by 4 this summation is one half of zeta of 2 the value of this integral is minus 1 over 8 times pi squared over 6 which is minus pi squared over 48 now we can evaluate the integral of interest by using the first property, we can write down the double integral as a single integral. x over y plus y over x is replaced by x plus 1 over x. This is log 1 plus x squared divided by x over 1 plus x squared divided by x. I can write x in the numerator. We can write down this logarithm as log 1 plus x squared minus log x. We can split this into two integrals. The first one is number 3. The second one is number 4 with a minus sign. The integral of interest is y squared over 48 plus log 2 squared divided by 4. The integrand of the second integral depends on the product x, y. This also can be written in terms of a single integral, x from 0 to 1, h of x times minus log x. The integrand has the dilogarithm, which can be written as this series, summation k from 1 to infinity, x to the k divided by k squared. We have the same friend from the previous page. We can start manipulating the integral. First step, of course, is to convert it into a single integral. We have the dilogarithm of x squared divided by x, and the conversion from double integral to single integral introduces this minus log x. The second step is to use number two, the series representation of the dilogarithm. Note that the dilogarithm here is squared. So this becomes a double sum, summation n from 1 to infinity, summation m from 1 to infinity, x to the n, x to the m, divided by n squared, m squared. We do integration term by term. We have log x, we also have x to the n plus m, 
minus one. If we apply this result, we get minus one, which can be used to eliminate this minus sign. And we get n plus m minus one plus one, that's n plus m squared in the denominator. Our double integral is equal to the double sum. Multiply numerator and denominator by n m n plus m. We get n m n plus m divided by n cubed m cubed n plus m cubed. Multiply and divide by three. This numerator can be expressed as n plus m cubed minus n cubed minus m cubed. Now we split into three sums. In the first one, we have summation over positive integers n and m of one over n cubed m cubed. In the second sum, the sum is one over m cubed n plus m cubed. In the third sum, we have one over n cubed n plus m cubed. In this summation, we change index n to k. Specifically, k is equal to n plus m. When n is one, k is m plus one. And when n tends to infinity, k tends to infinity. The sum becomes one over m cubed k cubed. Here, we change m to k. n remains as is. When m is one, k is n plus one. As m tends to infinity, k tends to infinity. In the first sum, rename m as k. We have one third sum over positive integers n and k, one over n k all cubed. In the second sum, rename m as n. We have minus one third summation n from one to infinity, k from n plus one to infinity, one over n k all cubed. In the third sum, we interchange the order of summation. Here, the outer sum is with respect to n, k is from n plus one to infinity. We make the outer sum k from one to infinity, n is from one to k minus one. Note that when k is equal to one, we have zero because the upper limit here becomes less than one. Rename n as k and k as n. One third is taken here as a common factor. The sum is one over n cubed k cubed. Here, n and k take positive integer values. Here, we have the constraint that k is greater than n. Here, we have the constraint that k is strictly less than n. And we have a minus sign before the second sum and the third sum. This means that from this summation, we eliminate all the terms where k is not equal to n. We are left only with the terms where k is equal to n. In this case, we have a single sum, n from one to infinity, of one over n cubed times n cubed. That's one over n to the power six. This summation is zeta of six. Our integral of interest is one third zeta of six.